Coming up next, a UFC welterweight division matchup. Well, it's always tough when you draw that high-level wrestler who has a lifetime of experience in a one-on-one -on -one competitive situation. Prevailing wisdom is he'll have the wrestling advantage in this one time. As his dad said, the moment he introduced him to the sport, he knew that he was made to be a wrestler. The kid slept in his headgear. He only wants to wrestle, and by doing that, he puts you in danger. He's constantly in your face, constantly trying to dig at your gas tank. He goes from transition to transition, single to double to high crotch. It does not matter the attack, he just knows that he will give you so much to process in terms of the wrestling that eventually he will get you to the ground. You ever sleep in your headgear? I sleep in my headgear. All the time? All the time. All right, big one for him here tonight. Let's get to it. All right, so here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next. When the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he can take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. So at least on paper, even matchup here, a lot of similarities across the board, evenly matched when it comes to the numbers. We set it inside the octagon, we find Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 22 wins, three losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Below! And now with the his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, only a professional record of 20 wins, 5 losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, Gilbert Durinho Burns. All right, bring through the rules in the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. You ready? Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so the fight is now underway on one side of the fight. I mean, Damian Maya may be the most specialist type of grappler in the UFC. This guy resembles him in a number of ways. Let's see how he manages this. Oh! Oh, he's hurt He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, he might be out. So no surprise, he wanted to get this fight to the ground, and that is certainly a good thing. Oh, beautiful counter there as he gains the side mount and try to get out of this guillotine by 
potentially attempting a Von Flu. Wow. Submission defense there. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. you got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Back to the feet now. Straight punch lands. Able to check the high kick. And that left hook landed on the button. And they separate. I mean, is this thing on the feet? Takedown. Up. We'll see what he can do. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. That's a big hook. to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC, talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. Leg kick land. Beautiful point. Oh, stuffs the takedown. Hit out awesome. as he takes him down. Now we'll see what he can do with it. Right into side control. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Fighter trying to pass here, Ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied. Great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground. That's very important. Oh, his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some real and just ground upon fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you got to be careful here. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop you've the You've got fight. to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture in the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes. It's starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Lands with the ground and pound. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. 
Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. How good is that right hand? Burns' his pass attempt denied. Well, you gotta be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Ground and pound strike is true. Burns back in full mount. Under a minute now in round two. 45 seconds remain in the round. All right, he continues to bully his opponent here, really manhandling him on the ground. And he's back up. And he connects there with a punch, so pretty good striking display by him thus far. He throws everything so straight and so accurate. Just missed with that right hand. All right, let's look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about just the efficiency when it comes to the ground and pound game? He was able to throw at the right time, secure at the right time. He wasted no action. For me, this is the most exciting type of fight. A guy that is just dominating his opponent, really, truly putting the grind on his opponent from the top position. Big punch land over the top. I was gonna follow this one. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood to those leg kicks. So he's landed some good shots. You hate to be overly good. All right, so a near-perfect entry there, and finally he gets his first takedown of the fight, and they say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, was able to get him down. There. Persistence pays, and that's what we saw with this young man. Over and over, he shot for takedowns, he tried to mix it up, and he got defended. But eventually, he got it done. Now, what does he do with this top of the field? Oh, nice connection by him there with the right hand. The right hand is the dominant hand, and you can see how well he throws it. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Right, bring and the referee bring brings the fight back to its feet. No surprise there. Needed to see more action. Well, let's go, let's go. Finish this, guys. Come on. I mean, he's cutting the down. Side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Oh, that'll work. The ground and pound strike is good. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Burns. All right, north-south position now, DC. We'll see how he chooses to advance from here. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here from bottom. Pretty significant well to the left side. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. That right hand hurt him a little bit. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in the gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. submission there just as the horn sounded safe to say he was saved by the bell there so back to the stools they go 60 seconds to recover here we're gonna fight on ladies and gentlemen another round coming up
All right, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went headhunting, landed, nearly got the finish, too. A lot of coaches tell you don't headhunt. In this case, he's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on notice. That one blocked by Burns. That's a big strike right there. Both fighters throwing heat now. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots. Right there, the seminal blow of the fight. I and mean, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect, John. Great placement on that uppercut. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defense. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocks any attempt to get past his guard. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. That was a lead elbow, and so he's mixing everything up. Back to his feet. Just over two minutes to go. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bear's watching. That's gonna hurt this opponent. That was a thudding leg kick. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? What a big time takedown. Oh, nice. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Got him with the choke. Wow. Oh, right to the mount. Burns has got his back now. Let's see what he can do. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Final seconds here. Well, this is some serious pressure from the top by Burns. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot of highlights from which to choose, but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown game. And that's what he does, right? He's a grinder. He's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you, drag you to the floor, it doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. He just wants to continue to make you work the entire time because he understands this type of grind most guys can't keep up with. Well, if you like wrestling and you like takedowns, I guess that's the round for you. He really had his way with his opponent there. Yeah, he was able to secure a bending takedown. See what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's gonna try to control him, then find a submission. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. The ground and down has been there all night. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, man, 
This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Well, you gotta be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Oh, some big punches raining down here. Picking the spots well and hasn't chosen to engage his opponent on the ground necessarily, posturing up and, and making these shots count. I mean, why would he? He's having so much success doing it in fighting in this exact same manner that's leading him to be ahead in the fight right now. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. All right, so he lands another punch there, and he smells blood in the water going right back at him. That's as good a punch as he's thrown on. The punch that lands down the middle, the one that you don't feel, is the one that lands perfect, and that one landed perfectly. All right, so now we are on the ground. Now he is in his wheelhouse. We'll see if he can get one of his submissions to pop here tonight. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, Blocks. he gets denied. Blocks! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. by this great fighter. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain, when you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another day. It's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's all your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're gonna break your shoulder. That's why you have to tap. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. So a seminal moment for this fighter here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Huge victory in his career, and it'll be very interesting to see how they match make him moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Vigliano is going to stop in this contest at four minutes, 36 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by tap out, Gilbert the Ring Young All right, so there he is, all smiles, and rightfully so, after he gets the job done by submission tonight. You told me off the air before the fight that he was going to submit him, and that's exactly what happened, man. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard, and his opponent is known to lay in the guard. 